before I do the show every day, I got to tell you this. This is great. Before I do the show every day, I sit in a chair and Tony, did, you know, dolls up my hair so it doesn't look so frizzy on camera. Because mm -hmm. my hair can look frizzy. And uh, I sit and I read the newspaper. I read the Daily News and the New York Post trying to sort of, you know, see what's going on, stay topical, blah, 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 blah. So it's like an important period of time for me because I need to read the newspaper. So only I got 20 minutes to read the paper. So all of a sudden I hear that booming voice coming down the hall of crazy cabbie. He's back? Yeah, they gave him the Sunday shift again. And they it's a, found him? But he's not allowed to talk. He just plays the music. Oh, you mean he can't say anything even? Which is weird. I wonder what the show sounds like. Really? It sounds like a robot. He might as well be a machine. Right. Well, they're breaking him in again. Well, can't talk at all. I mean, wow. he has to give IDs and stuff like that. Yeah, there he is. So, like, you know, like I'm sitting there reading the paper, and I hear that booming oh, he voice. Breaks in on and he's like, hey, Edward. <laughs> and then I'm like, hey, man, how you doing? And, and then won't go away. Won't go, and then I say to him, look, this is my time to read the newspaper. I can't talk to you. And then he just stands in the hall and keeps talking to me. And it's like, dude. I can't talk to you that time in the morning. I like. I don't you want know, to. Uh, they, you're talking to a guy who takes his job seriously. Yeah, like, I you... take mine serious. His <laughs> <laughs> headphones suck. Right. And now you can talk. What happened? They won't let you talk on your shift? Yeah, so I get to play music. Dude, don't talk to me when I'm reading the paper. Please don't Sorry. come back. You know, I'm. I mean, doesn't it occur to you that I'm like really busy in there? Or does it ever occur to you that people can't talk? Yeah. No. It's like 6 o'clock. It's not even 6 o'clock in the morning yet, and he wants to have a conversation about, hey, how was your weekend? What's up? I've been up all night. Yeah, well, don't talk That's to me. I problem. didn't get to crack the mic. I didn't have anybody to talk to for I don't care. Hours. Don't talk to me. He's about to burst. If you don't talk to him, he'll die. And he sees it. When you see me reading the paper and I'm not even acknowledging you, don't you start to think, like, maybe you're annoying me? Yeah. Yeah, so, what, like, what do you do? Do you just, like, say, hey, I don't care. I want to talk you to him. You can't help it. I'm a pain in the ass. Yeah, you are, dude. Just I didn't realize it. The more I get to know you, the bigger pain in the ass you are. I think he's the kind of guy, if you like him, yeah. he has to do something to ruin it. Right. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. My there, you there you go. There you go. Robin's hit it right on the head. It's all that forum stuff she, she should does. She be a shrink. <laughs> she's a shrink. <laughs> she's right, though, about you. It's You're just my life. Ruin it. Everything in the <laughs> Like, I like you, now I can't stand you. Because <laughs> 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 I'm sitting there, I go, I'm like buried in the newspaper, and he's still talking, he's and talking I go, through the newspaper. Yeah, and it's like, I go, how rude do I have to be to get rid of him? Dude, for anybody to talk to me, sometimes it's just exciting to be acknowledged. Yeah. So I, so I, I like you. I know. Even, you know, the number of phone calls you say he gives, where, you know, like he'll call you th two, twice, and if you don't get back to him right away, it's like, hey, dude, hmm. didn't answer my call. Yeah, well, that, he calls me obsessively, and then he'll be like, Hey, man. When's the last time I Please called you? Yeah, well, now, after I embarrassed you. <laughs> you had to be told. Don't you understand? I can't be embarrassed. I know. That's weird. <laughs> it just doesn't bother me. So are you talking about anything? You know what I mean? What's that? Are you talking I'm about... Ta dude. Have you been life, talking about that? My life's an open book. What happened? All right, here's the deal. I was, now I'm going to tell the story. I was I, you know, I, well, I wouldn't I, do it without his permission. I left, but, you know, I could have talked to you off the air. I left without finding out the end of the story. All right, here it is. Okay. So, Cabby... You know, he's, he, he disappeared. Well, what happened was he he does a show with this guy Kane. Yeah. At night. Monday through Friday. And Kane's like a real good looking guy, and he's real successful. He's probably pulling down two, three hundred thou a year. Easy. Easy. Because Cabby's always stuff. figuring out what Kane's making. Right. Well, it's not hard to figure out. The guy tells me. Oh, okay. So, so anyway, because he's got TV shows, Kane, on VH1, on MTV. He's got extra side gigs he does. Yeah, all yeah. He's going to be on Sex in the City. Right. He's big. He's a big deal. Yeah. He's a big time DJ. So, Cabby does a show with him at night. Right. He's the sidekick. Cabby's pulling down, what, 25000 a year? That's about right. <laughs> yeah. So he, he, he's I don't pulling. know. That's not even pulling. And so, Cabby keeps going to the station, asking for more money. They tell him no. And, they tell me I'm pretty where guy. I should be. Yeah, yeah, you're pretty much where you well, should wait be. wait a minute. Now, is he pulling down the 25 with the Sunday shift? Or is no. That extra? No, the Sunday shift was extra. Okay. Right. So now he's making 100. That was, make, that was my food money. for. The, that was an extra 100. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, at least it's something. Yeah. Are you able to talk? Now, why are they? Oh, okay. All right. Well, I'm jumping ahead. Okay. All right. What's so wait a second. Listen to this. This is the greatest. So he doesn't show up for his nighttime show. And then he was booked on this show to come in, and for him not to show up here, I knew something was wrong. It's amazing, because he's, he's here anyway, whether right. you want him or not. Right. So Chiasano comes in. Tom Chiasano, our general manager, says, hey, I'm worried about Cabby. He hasn't shown up, blah, 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 blah. I said, hey, I'll give him a call. Let me go see what's doing. I call him up. 
by the way, picks up the phone because it's me. Oh, he wasn't answering for anybody else because I'm sure they called. I didn't know who it was. Right. I swear to God. But I called. Wait, wasn't the station calling? Were people calling you and stuff? Uh, Kane called once and said, you better be dead. <laughs> that was it. That was right. the only call I got. <laughs> no one else had called. Right. Oh, okay. okay. So, because Gary was getting called saying, "Do you know where he is?" Yeah. So I, so I picked up the phone and called, and he goes, "Oh man, I fell off the wagon." Yep. When did you fall off? Because he was in re How long were you in rehab for? Uh, rehab almost ninety days. And Good lord, that's I, three months. And because uh, you were a crack addict, crack and everything, drinking and everything. Right. Yeah. And and how long had you been sober? Uh, just a little over two years. It was like two oh. years in a couple days. All right. And Robin said minute. to me. That a hole. He's he's probably. Uh, Before we knew anything. I told him you were off the way. Yeah, right. She knew right away. <laughs> she goes. That's what re that's what al being an alcoholic is all about. You constantly go. <laughs> but see, it's not. Nobody can really. It's not what it's all about. It takes about six falls on your face before right. you get it. That's yeah, not true. So, so they go. So he goes. Oh man, I I I'm, I'm, I fell off the wagon because, you know. Kingston's been giving me a hard time. He's the program director. Excuses, excuses. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. He fell off the wagon because he took a drink. Right. So he goes, and this one's giving me a hard time, and everyone's giving me a hard time, and I'm like, oh, boy. Blame, That's blame, blame. That's you know he's going to fall again. Right. There are right. excuses. As soon as somebody, somebody gets on his ass, he has to drink. There's excuses. But his thing is, I would have killed all everyone at the station, so this if way. If I didn't drink. If I drink, it's better I, I hurt myself than I hurt, you know. So That's what an alcoholic is. I just want to know, what did you drink, and where'd you go, and yeah, how, how great was, was it? How great was it? <laughs> It was horrible. Uh, no, I, I don't mean how bad was it that it's not good. I mean, how drunk did he Yeah, get? what happened? I, I as drank, long as you're going to go off the wagon. I drank 15, about 15 Guinness. Oh, really? Oh. And, and I would have margaritas. Three shots of whiskey. It's not about it tasting good for him. Yeah, you went to the bus. I like Guinness. Mm -hmm. Guinness is good beer. So what happened? When did you make the decision to go off the wagon? Uh, it was basically... Uh, that afternoon was it Tuesday? What happened that day? I think it was Tuesday or Wednesday. I think they would have given him a raise or something. Well, we've been in you know the what? Again. I just it's I, I'm a target, you know, because I'm a big mouth and I'm in everybody's face and I'm always here because You're I don't a have a target. social. Life. Let him talk. I don't have a social life, so I hang out at the station a lot. Right. And when things start to go wrong at the station, fingers start pointing. And because I'm loud and I'm in people's face, and hey, I know I bring it on a lot myself. Right. The fingers start pointing at me because I'm always here. And right. I'm always, you know, if somebody says this or if. Stop being cryptic. Interpret. What finger pointed at you this time? Yeah. Uh, let me interpret, Howard. Yeah. Okay. Because I was about to come in and tell you all the bizarre rumors going going around about Kevin. And again, Kevin, these are only rumors, and I'm sure you've heard all of them. Oh, I've heard them all. One of the rumors was that somebody had been breaking into offices and stealing tickets. Ah. Right. They think... So, of course, all fingers went to Cabby. That, okay. Cabby <laughs> yeah, well, that never happened before Cabby came in. I know. There's always stuff missing from the state. Uh, have you been stealing from the offices? No. And uh. that was one of the things they pointed right at me. <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? I've done a lot of things in my life. I'm not a thief. All right. All right. Yeah, what else are the rumors? Uh, one of the rumors was that um, crack dealers were calling Kane's cell phone looking for Cabby. <laughs> <laughs> Of, uh, of um, uh, that he that he was hassling some of the female interns. That was right. another rumor. Right. Um, yeah, he, he gets blamed for almost everything. I do, yeah. and it's been my all my life. I've been blamed for lots of things. I mean, because I'm loud, I'm obnoxious. Look at me. Right. I'm in your face. It looks right. like you've done something. Yeah, you do right. look guilty of something. I always have. <laughs> and you, do. you probably did something. We're just not sure what it is. You know what it is? Here's a formula: yeah. being abrasive. Plus being a former crackhead, right. plus making no money equals right. he's got the tickets. Right. You know. Right. Right. Yeah, and he's always begging for money, so he right. has to have the tickets. Right. And he's here way too much. Right. So right. now what I've done is I've taken Kane's advice and I show up five minutes before my shift, right. and I leave after my shift. See that? Wait a minute. Kane's smart. Way he is. He says, you know what? He says that's the way to do it because then no one sees you. They don't know what what the hell you're doing. Right. And, and you're not here. Right. But and so wait a minute. I want to so He starts <laughs> drinking the Guinness. Drank the Guinness. So what happened? Where were you? Yeah, when, what time was it that you started drinking? Because it was the pressure was getting to you. It was uh, when I was supposed to, you know, usually come in here about 3 o'clock. 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So yeah. where were you? Uh, I was at a bar by my house. It's uh, right <laughs> off the subway. Oh, oh really? Walk. You went into a bar by yourself. By myself. Oh, oh that's yeah. that's a drunk. <laughs> that's a drunk. Yeah, when you're supposed to go to work, you can't make it to the subway station because there's a bar between you and the subway. Yeah, I thought you were partying. That's why I thought you were like with like a bunch of guys. Oh, or, no, 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 you were by yourself. Yeah. You sat at a bar stool. You sat at a bar stool. 
in a place where you didn't know anybody and just drank. Yep. And you'd made the decision like five minutes before that you're going to drink, or you'd been Basically. thinking about it. I mean, I had been but thinking about it all right. day. Yeah. He'd drop a big hand, Howard. Yeah. Wait a what did he say? Well, he would say stuff like he would joke around about about uh. Uh, you know, he was getting hassled. Uh, you know, it's enough to make you want to fall off the wagon. He had said to me once. And then there was another one where he was going to, I think we might have been talking about a ba Doug's bachelor party or something. And he, he kidded with me and he said, oh, you know, who knows? Maybe that night I'll go off the wagon. Maybe oh, the I bar. see. I see. Yeah, really. He's feeling everyone out on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He sits there and look at it before, yeah. you know, like, did you, no. did you, or did you just drink it right there? Drank the shot and drank the Guinness. <laughs> right there. I hammered that first one back. How long were you in the bar for drinking? Long time. A couple hours? Yeah, a few. About and did seven. you get sloppy drunk in there before no. you out? You know what? Actually, I think I paced it long enough. I didn't really feel that drunk. I thought I'd be bombed and falling on the floor, but, mm. you know. it was So it was nice. Can you explain the weird phone? So what? So... What weird phone calls? The phone calls that, like, I got these phone calls at home that Cabby is missing, but he's been calling in, and he's riding the number 7 train, and he's got a big surprise Yeah, what was that about? It was a, a special announcement could have been made. It still hasn't been made yet. Yeah. yeah. I heard that rumor, too. What was that? I have, I, I'm not a ma I'm, I'm not going to say anything uh, else. Oh, I heard that w you're getting married or something. That maybe. To who? To the girl! Well, you said that, too, Robin. I told... I know him. Yeah, he's easy. He's easy to You're back with that girl, the one you broke up with on the I'm air? I'm not really back with her, mm. but we've been talking. But uh, he might marry her. Are you begging her to come back? Why are you going to ruin her life by marrying her? Well, it's good material. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> he's going he's gonna to ruin her life because he's not going to stay faithful. Well, she knows what she's... Right. She knows so what she's the two of with. them... I was always there. each other, probably. Mm. Probably right. <laughs> we're both nuts. Yeah. I, I thought you were about all these chicks coming on to you. Was that all a lie? No, they were. They are. Daily. She's got the formula. But then this the married The formula chick. he needs. Yeah. Which is? She she puts it? up with his craziness, right. and, and she knows it. She's good and bad. Right. She's hot. She does my laundry and cleans my house. Oh, maybe you got a point there. And she she's good oral and anal. Really? God bless America. I trained her well. Sure. And I can't find another one in this damn city to train, because all these women got problems. <laughs> Ah, women no, got problems. This one is broken in. She's ready. She's yeah. good to go. She's good to go. Every other girl is a, is a three year project. That's mm. right. He's got to teach them. I put three years into this one. Right. right. So well, I give it over to someone else. That's right. right. Yeah. That's where I'm at. Ah, He's got the formula. Hey, I'm going to the wedding. I got one question for you, Cabby. <laughs> yes. You fell off, what was it, like a week ago or 10 days ago? Yeah, oh, like a week ago. Don't you, have to go, don't you have to go right back to. Training or rehab or whatever that I went, is? Yeah, I went to a... No, you don't have to go back to rehab. You just go back to a meeting? Yeah, I went to a couple of meetings the next day. Wait a minute. So I'm, you drank that one night. Yeah, I'm not You too wake sure. up in the morning. Yeah, you And you go to guilty. a meeting? Yeah, you feel did guilty. Did you call yourself. your sponsor? I talked to a lot of people in the program. <laughs> you did? Yeah. Come a lot of people with good Imagine. sober time who said, hey, you know, it happens. It's not... What do you do after that? Do you stay off it or do you, you want to go back to it? I don't know what I'm doing. Have you been drinking? No, today I'm sober. Right. Right He's yesterday. like a beggar yes, one day I, at a time. Since that night, I haven't had any more. Now, when you go to a meeting here in the city, right. are you basically walking in with, with a bunch of strangers? Because back home, you probably went to meetings where you knew people. Yeah. And you walk in with a bunch of strangers and yeah. just tell them the whole story. And they, so he probably likes you, because at least he has some friends and some fun. It's, yeah. real, it's real hard here. It, the AA meetings here are way different than back home. I mean, it's really... People are... It's just different. It's different. Yeah. It's like going to school in another state. They're you harder know? on you here. No, they just you don't really get a chance to talk. You got to raise your hand and 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 you got to hear everybody else's crap. You know what it is? In the city, it's a hundred guys. Back home, it was five guys in the basement of his church. Right, right, right. <laughs> now, now it's a whole big thing. I'm not from Blue Earth, Minnesota. <laughs> and you need to talk. <laughs> I do. I yeah. need to talk. You need talk time. I need talk. And you got to wait for all these other city said, slickers. Yeah. yeah. You said you called a lot of people. I did. How many? Uh, I called about six or seven. Good I had to call Lord. one of them while, while I was drinking. <laughs> <laughs> and what did he say? He said, well, wait. <laughs> no. He's in Minneapolis. He said, well, well, go get drunk. You're already there. So he might as well. Yeah, might as well not waste it. Yeah. Right. Well, you're on a binge. <laughs> I got some supportive people in my life, and then I've got some people that aren't. Because they're that's another rap he gives me. They're using. Yeah. Just like... He hangs around with certain guys. I'm not going to mention names because they're, you know, known. Right. And he starts blaming them. I'm not blaming them. Because they drink and party hard. And but, he, but they can control it. Well, yeah, okay. so far. 
Well, that's the other thing about people in the program. Yeah. They see problems with everybody who does drink. Yeah, I feel bad, too, because remember that night you were out with me? I was drinking margaritas, and I said, hey, come on, have a few. I said, you can drink two or three. And Nothing go crazy. We're just going to get through the Penn & Teller show with a little drinking. No problem. Yeah, it looked like he wanted but you see, he likes to go off and drink by himself. He's a hardcore alky. See, I'm not blaming anybody. Yeah. I did it myself. I mean, I chose to go out No, you were blaming everybody. Now everyone told you not to blame everybody. No, I wasn't blaming. I was just saying yeah. I could have came into work that day and probably done something that would I would have regretted more. Mm. Sure. than going out and getting wasted by myself. That's right. bull. Whatever. You're not going to do I'll anything. kiss it. But get drunk. <laughs> what do you know? What do. the hell do you know? That's all you're going to do. Mm. <laughs> In all fairness to Robert, she's, hit, she's been right on everything so far. <laughs> right. That's because women are always right. <laughs> Men are stupid and women are evil. See, she knows you. She told me right away. She said, "Oh, that idiot's on right crack or something." I said, "No, it wasn't crack. It was he's, just." Yeah. He's in the gutter. Look at her laughing at the point. She loves it. Oh, she likes being right. Look at her. It's not that she doesn't feel bad for you. It's just that she likes being right. Of course, yeah. all women do. He's in the gutter. I told him right away. He goes, no, no, no. He's committed to his sobriety. I go, please. Yeah, you had me fooled. I, I was committed. I was committed for two years. You should no, be should committed. Be committed. <laughs> no, I got this tattoo on my arm I got to cover up. <laughs> yeah, what was that? Uh, my sobriety date. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Steve, you're on the air. Yeah, Howard, how can I get into the death pool? I want to take crazy cabbie. Yeah, you know, I was thinking of putting him, him on my list. Yeah, he could be dead soon. He's pretty, he's pretty volatile. I am volatile. He doesn't feel like he's depression. I ain't going to be dying anytime soon. Right. You don't know. All right, now you tell me everything you want to tell me while I'm trying to read the newspaper? Yeah. So what happened? Did he get into trouble with the management here? Yeah, well, Tom was real understanding because I, I talked to Tom, and Tom felt bad for him, but Tom's like, you know, how much more can I put up with with this guy? He sees every minute there's a problem. But I said, ah, hey, you know, listen. Yeah, they were they were pretty understanding. They were. They were real nice to him. Good. You know, they realize he's sick. <laughs> yeah, like Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> yeah, we have to put up with it. <laughs> He's on project. We have to take care of him. Yeah. No, Tom said something real nice to me. He said, hey, I, you know, no one here wants to see you succeed more than me. Tom said that? Yeah, to me. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, he's not going to pay you. He's going to pay you for it, though. <laughs> he wants you to say, how can you succeed? Isn't the mark of success getting paid? I think. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. I'm waiting to see that. Yeah, happen. that's funny. John, you're on the air. Yeah, um, don't miss name like day. Didn't he try any crack when he was drinking? No, he didn't try any crack. Oh, you know, when you first met him, it was every Monday, cabby, cabby. You almost made me miss Ralph. Yeah. <laughs> But not that much. He finally realized he's a pathetic, fat loser. And a lot of people they hate you. Cabby. Yeah, they, they do. They I hate get, you. I get some great hate mail. Yeah, he, they, a lot and of people hate that. you, man. No, I'm, I'm shocked because I'm like, you know, I, I like Cabby and I have him on the show and stuff, and, but I get more crap for putting Cabby on. You know why? Why? The, the, the theory that I've been told is because, number one, I came from nowhere. Number mm -hmm. two... Yeah. The number two. Everybody comes from nowhere. No, that's what I said. There's, number, there's no, there's no successful people who show up on this show. No, number two, said, yeah. exactly. Right. That, that we became become friends, and people get angry because they're not close to you, and I've gotten a little bit close. I think they're just annoyed by you. I, yeah, I don't think they I think care. Thinking too much. I, you the know what? Time they heard you. They hated you. The people just don't like you. <laughs> but why? Hey, so why don't you like Cabby? Just explain it so he understands. Why I don't like him? Yeah, it's like it's obnoxious. Not him. Try to get rid of Eric. I'd like to race him in my wheelchair if I can ban him from the show. Right. Okay. Well, there it is. You know what? I did win that race, and he's. I bet Eric's on the radio more than I am now. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> Thank God. Here's a guy who hates you. Let's find out why people hate yeah, you. Let's find out. Let's see if I can't. Uh... There's about four of them that really hate me. John. Yo, Howard. How you doing? You hate Cabby? No, I like. I, I, I'm a big fan. Actually. Oh, there you go. I think he's cool. See? So I wanted to ask him about. Uh, you know, when was the last meeting that he went to before he... Uh, he got cocky. That's a good question. You got cocky, dude, because you were like, um, I, don't I don't need meetings anymore. I'm in New York. I never said that. Well, you didn't have, when was the last time you went to a meeting before you got when drunk? You it was a while. It was How many month. months? A month. Say. It was a month. Say. I, I should have seen it coming. he said in here that he really needed those meetings, and he wasn't going. Yeah, because he got all full of himself. He's no, a crazy cabby. And then he's hanging in like all the wrong places, just like with all you know people drinking all the time. But you I know. don't hang out that much and go to places that people drink. I mean, I because I don't make any money. I can't even afford to eat some weeks, and I'm, I'm not hanging out where people are drinking. I mean, you know, you went out with those, uh, Howard those couple times. I mean, that's surrounded by people who are just like blitzed, man. 
Yeah. Everywhere I go, people are blitzed. I've never seen anything like it in Manhattan. People just drink all night. They really do. Yeah. You were part of the problem. I didn't want to tell you, but yeah. you were part of it. Yeah, definitely. But Howard doesn't drink that much. I really it's don't. It's not about he whether he's drink. drinking that much. It's the people I hang he's around standing with. standing there wanting to be a part of it. Yeah, he wants to be accepted. Well, I can drink if I want or not. I mean, uh, well, so can everybody else. Exactly. Right, right. Yeah, go ahead, Tiny. Hello, Howard. Yeah. Yeah, I was at the Little Biscuit show, the free one. And I saw uh, Cabby there with a beer and, like, all crazy girls all around him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, See that? You've been drinking all along? He's lying. He is. He's lying. You didn't have a beer at the Limp Biscuit no, show? I didn't. I don't know if he's drinking <laughs> it, but I saw him holding a beer and talking to, like, at least two girls every time I saw him. Maybe, maybe, uh... Are you holding it for Were you holding a beer to look maybe cool? Maybe he was looking at Booker or Kane. I know what you look like, Cabby. Like, everyone else... Sees so he gets upset with Booker and Kane because they can drink. Right. But it's not that. Yeah. It's the fact that Kane, and I love him, he's a great guy, he always gives me this, oh, man, come on, why are you going to deprive yourself of something that you love so much? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I can't believe how the girls are always hanging off on the like, Cabby? Don't believe it. It's all hype. It's all hype. <laughs> Chicks don't dig me that much. Yeah, they don't dig me. two girls around you giving you phone numbers or hugging you and kissing you every time I saw you at Whip Biscuit. Okay. I'm the, I'm the king, and chicks do dig me. But... <laughs> <laughs> so walking around pissing on the cell phone. 